Hello all, welcome back to our class. In the previous class, we discussed about um, units of measurements of an angle. So now, let us discuss about how the inter uh, the trigonometry is been introduced and what are all the concepts involved in trigonometry, right? So before we get into trigonometry, first of all, let us try to understand what is meant by a ratio. Can anybody say what is meant by ratio? Ratio is the comparison between two quantities of the same kind. Comparison between two similar quantities is said to be a ratio. Of course, you can compare two, two terms or three terms or four terms, doesn't matter. But when the comparison comes into picture, at least two objects must be there. So, those two must be of the same kind. So, finally, the ratio is the comparison between two quantities of the same kind. For example, I can eat 5 eggs in 10 minutes and some other person Y can eat 15 eggs in 10 minutes. So, then what is the ratio between these two things? I can eat 5 and the other person can eat 10. Otherwise, I can eat 2, the other person can eat 3. Otherwise, I can eat 2, the other person can also eat 2. See, the comparison is happening between these two quantities. For example, if I can eat 5 eggs in 10 minutes and the other person can walk 5 kilometers in 2 hours, can we compare these two quantities? Absolutely, we cannot because those two quantities are not similar quantities or same kind of quantities. Because I can eat x, this is the number of x that I can eat in a particular point of time, but the other person can walk 10 kilometers or 5 kilometers in particular period of time. So, that is what the distance he is walking, but this is what I can eat the number of x. So, these two quantities cannot be comparable, so that there is no ratio between these two quantities. So, apart from this, for example, if I can do a piece of work in one hour, so, other person can do the same piece of work in suppose 2 hours. Then we can compare these two quantities because what is the work done by me as well as what is the work done by the other person. Like that, when you have a ratio between two terms, those two terms of the same kind, then only we can compare both the terms. For example, two terms are x and y. These two are two quantities of the same kind then the ratio between these two quantities is indicated by x is to y. In this x is to y, the first quantity x is said to be antecedent and the second quantity y is said to be consequent. You already learned it in 8th class and 7th class itself. So, with the help of two terms or two quantities x and y, how many number of ratios that can be formed? One ratio is x is to y. Can you form the other ratio? Yes, absolutely. What is the other ratio? y is to x. These two are two ratios. And x is to y and y is to x. What is the difference between these two? Here, x is to y is said to be the reciprocal ratio of y is to x. And y is to x is said to be the reciprocal ratio of x is to y. So, that is what the difference between both the ratios. So, now, Getting into our real trigonometry, for that I am considering one unit circle. You know what is meant by unit circle? Unit circle means the radius of the circle is going to be 1. Then only it is said to be a unit circle. See for example, this is a unit circle. Means the radius of the circle is going to be 1 unit. Okay? Let us consider the center of the circle is going to be the origin. Is going to be the origin means what? Let us have x axis as well as y axis. And moreover, the center of our circle is at origin. So, this is origin and this is x axis as well as this is y axis. You are aware of this. Okay. And this is x dash and this is y dash. Right. So, for example, there is a ray which lies on x axis and started rotating in anti clockwise direction. So, when it is started rotating in anti clockwise direction, for example, this is the position of that ray. So, this is the ray, you can call this ray or you can name this ray as ray OP. And from, from 
O to P, this is what called the radius of the circle. Of course, it is since it is a unit circle, so the radius is obviously one unit. So wherever this P lying on this circular part, so O P is always equal to one unit. Now, if you drop a perpendicular from P on to X axis, so this length is exactly parallel to positive Y axis. So that let us consider this length is equal to some Y, and this is the length on x axis so that let us consider this is x that is why you can name this point p as x comma y right and if you observe there is a right angle triangle formed that right angle triangle is o p a for example okay in this right angle triangle which ray is rotating in anti clockwise direction the ray o p is rotating in anti clockwise direction so that this is what the angle made by op with x axis in anti clockwise direction right so let us name this angle as some theta right now in this right angle triangle oap we know one of the angles is theta and already it is right angle as it is right angle triangle then what can you infer about this theta as well as this other angle of right angle triangle if you have a right angle triangle one of the angles is already 90 degrees if one of the angles is 90 degrees what can you infer about these two angles yes according to sum of the angles of a triangle property if one angle is equal to 90 the other angle sum is going to be 90 because all the three angles add up to 180 degrees so that it is 90 and this sum is equal to 90 degrees if sum of two angles is equal to 90 degrees and moreover they are the angles of a triangle then obviously each angle must be an acute angle no angle can be 0 degrees no angle can be 90 degrees also suppose if any angle is 0 degrees or 90 degrees there is no triangle formed so that is why these two other angles must be acute angles okay so coming to this theta otherwise the other angle of this right angle triangle with respect to this angle theta with respect to angle theta of our right angle triangle what do you call this y according to that angle theta and what do you call this x according to angle theta and what do you call that op for that right angle triangle let us try to understand by just drawing this triangle separately okay so when i draw this triangle separately that is triangle opa i am drawing that triangle separately that triangle is this is 90 degrees this is o this is p and this is a since this is angle theta which is in anti clockwise direction and this length is named y and this length is named x for example this length can be anything but in our figure it was a unit circle that's why the radius is going to be 1 but not sure the radius can be 1 or radius can be 2 radius can be 3 for for anything so that is why i'm just taking op is equal to the radius radius is radius only right now according to this angle theta according to this angle theta what do you call this side that side is said to be side opposite to theta according to this theta side pa is said to be the side opposite to theta according to this theta what do you call this x this x is said to be side adjacent to theta but is there any other adjacent side to theta yes there is that is what op but being it is a right angled triangle the side which is opposite to the right vertex is named as hypotenuse there is no other name for that side because that is the longest side as well as the side which is opposite to the right angle is said to be the hypotenuse so that even it is the side adjacent to theta we should not call it as side adjacent to theta because it is already named as hypotenuse of course this is the one of the side which is adjacent to theta but it has a special name that is hypotenuse now coming to the point see there are totally three sides those three sides are first side is y second side is x third side is r so therefore there are totally three sides of the triangle with the help of these three sides how many number of ratios that can be formed 
let us try to understand okay so i am taking the first ratio that first ratio is ratio 1 please concentrate we are getting into trigonometry now so the first ratio is the ratio between y and r what is y here y is side opposite to theta as well as what is r here r is hypotenuse so y divided by r is equal to side opposite to theta divided by r is equal to side adjacent to theta right so the first ratio is going to be y divided by r which is equal to side opposite to theta divided by r is going to be hypotenuse side opposite to theta by hypotenuse according to theta is named as sin theta s i n e theta right and we can write this briefly as s i n theta but you should not read it as sin theta you should read it as sin theta only okay and coming to the second ratio that second ratio is going to be the ratio between x and r that is x by r is equal to what exactly x is here x is adjacent side to theta so that x is side adjacent to theta divided by hypotenuse so side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse is called cosine theta so what do you call this cosine theta and briefly you can write it as cos theta cos theta cosine theta the full form of cos theta is cosine theta correct and coming to the third ratio third ratio is the ratio between y and x so here y is equal to side opposite to theta divided by x is equal to side adjacent to theta okay side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta is named as tangent to theta what do you call that tangent theta and briefly you can write it as tan theta so tan theta is the ratio between side opposite to theta and side adjacent to theta now these three are three different ratios we know about reciprocal ratios if x is to y is one ratio then what is the reciprocal ratio of x is to y that is going to be y is to x now we have three different ratios y is to r x is to r y is to x now if you take the reciprocals of those three ratios you will get three more ratios you can name those three more ratios as follows they are the fourth ratio is the reciprocal ratio of y by r that is r divided by y what is r here r is equal to hypotenuse divided by y is equal to side opposite to theta right so hypotenuse by side opposite to theta is named as cosecant theta what do you call this cosecant theta cosecant theta is the ratio between hypotenuse and side opposite to theta and uh, fifth one is the reciprocal ratio of x by r that is r divided by x which is equal to r is hypotenuse divided by side adjacent to theta so the ratio between hypotenuse and side adjacent to theta is named as secant theta and you can write briefly s e c theta s e c theta means secant theta so secant theta is the ratio between hypotenuse and side adjacent to theta and finally the sixth ratio is the reciprocal ratio of third one so the third ratio is y divided by x so the reciprocal ratio of y divided by x is x divided by y so x by y is equal to what is x here side adjacent to theta divided by side opposite to theta so side adjacent to theta by side opposite to theta is named as cotangent theta right cotangent theta and briefly you can write it as cot theta 
So, these 6 are 6 trigonometric ratios. The first one is sin theta, which is the ratio between side opposite to theta and side, side opposite to theta and hypotenuse. And second ratio is cosine theta or cos theta, which is the ratio between side adjacent to theta and hypotenuse. And third one is tangent theta or tan theta, which is the ratio between side opposite to theta and side adjacent to theta. And fourth one is cosecant theta, which is the ratio between hypotenuse and side adjacent to theta. More precisely, this is the reciprocal ratio of sin theta. That is what the relationship between sin theta and cosecant theta. See, if you find out the reciprocal of sin theta, then you will get cosecant theta. It means if you find the reciprocal of cosecant theta, you will get sin theta. So, sin theta and cosecant theta both are reciprocal ratios. So, similarly, cos theta. So, cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse as well as secant theta is equal to hypotenuse by side adjacent to theta. So, again cos theta and secant theta both are reciprocals. So, cos theta is equal to 1 by secant theta as well as secant theta is equal to 1 by cos theta. And coming to last ratio that is cotangent theta or cot theta, which is the ratio between side adjacent to theta and side opposite to theta. Again, this is cot theta is the reciprocal ratio of tan theta. Again, tan theta is the reciprocal ratio of cot theta. So, these 6 are 6 trigonometric ratios. These 6 trigonometric ratios are sin theta, cos theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, secant theta and cot theta are defined according to acute angle theta of a right angled triangle. So, all these 6 ratios are said to be trigonometric ratios and these are the definitions of trigonometric ratios. What is the definition of sin theta or how sin theta is defined? Sin theta is defined as if theta is an acute angle of a right angle triangle, then side opposite to theta by hypotenuse is said to be sin theta like that the other five trigonometric ratios. So, what we learnt in this concept? What are trigonometric ratios? There are totally six trigonometric ratios that is sin theta, cos theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, secant theta as well as cot theta. So, these six are six trigonometric ratios. I will just write them again. Hope you all understand what are all these six trigonometric ratios. Correct? Right. So, I will just write them briefly one by one. First trigonometric ratio is sin theta and the second trigonometric ratio is cos theta. Third trigonometric ratio is tan theta. Fourth trigonometric ratio is cosecant theta and fifth trigonometric ratio is secant theta and sixth trigonometric ratio is cotangent theta or cot theta, right? What is the full form of sin theta? S i n e theta, but you do not have to write it as S i n e theta. You just write it as S i n theta. Ensure that you should read it as sin theta, but not sin theta, right? And what is the full form of cos theta? Cosine theta but you should read it as cos theta. That is enough. You do not have to read it as cosine theta. And what is the full form of tan theta? That is tangent theta. You read it as tan theta okay? and cosecant theta. Of course, this is cosecant theta. C S C theta or C O S E C theta. The full form of cosecant theta is C O S E C A N T cosecant theta, but you do not have to write it as cosecant theta, just write it as C S C theta or C O S C C theta. That is enough. And secant theta, what is the full form of secant theta? S E C A N T secant theta, but read it as secant theta. If you want to read it as sec theta, it is okay, does not matter, but better read it as secant theta. And the last ratio is cot theta, but the full form of cot theta as cotangent theta, right? They are cotangent theta. Simply, you write it as cot theta and read it as cot theta. Do not have to read it as cotangent theta. If you want to observe the full form of trigonometric ratios, you can understand one thing that some trigonometric ratios are named again 
with a little modification what is that little modification there are two letters are being added to those trigonometric ratios have you observed them see here co sin theta sin theta was already there but co only added to that similarly co secant theta co is added to secant theta that's why it became co secant theta similarly co tangent theta tangent theta was already there co is added to tangent theta then it became co tangent theta see there are only three ratios but the other three ratios are formed just by adding the word co to them why what is the re reason behind behind co is being added to every single ratio those ratios are called co ratios the co ratio of sin is cosine the co ratio of tan is cotan the co ratio of secant is cosecant because these trigonometric ratios will be converted into their co ratios at odd multiples of 90 degrees we will discuss about that later i am just telling you what are the names of six trigonometric ratios okay they are said to be co ratios right and these are six trigonometric ratios and let us try to understand what is the relationship between trigonometric ratios we define trigonometric ratios as sin theta equal to side opposite to theta by hypotenuse cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse tan theta is equal to side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta and cosecant theta is equal to hypotenuse by side opposite to theta secant theta is equal to hypotenuse by side adjacent to theta and cot theta is equal to side adjacent to theta by side opposite to theta and we are uh, already observed that sin theta and cosecant theta are reciprocals secant theta and cos theta are reciprocals and tan theta as well as cot theta are reciprocals so i will just write them all clearly about the relationship between trigonometric ratios and beforehand we just understand one thing that only thing is for example what exactly the meaning of sin theta we already discussed if theta is an acute angle then sin theta is the ratio between side opposite to theta and hypotenuse can i write this sin theta as sin multiplied by theta absolutely it is not possible and we cannot think sin theta as sin into theta when you think sin into theta it means sin is a separate word and theta is a separate word so sin cannot be considered as a separate word in mathematics it may be some other meaning in english language but there is no sin there is no cos if there is an angle being added to the sin then only there is a meaning of a trigonometric ratio that theta can be anything it can be either sexagesimal measure or centesimal measure or radian measure whatever it is but if there is no angle after sin there is no meaning of sin so that is why please do not look at sin theta as sin and theta are separate terms are being added to get sin theta right so there is no sin into theta so sin theta has a specific value according to the value of theta of course okay you cannot treat that sin theta as sin is one term and theta is other term suppose if there is no sin if there is no theta what is the meaning of sin there may be meaning of sin or sin in english language but there is no meaning of sin in mathematical language like not only for sin for any other trigonometric ratios right so please do not think that sin theta as the product of sin as well as theta hope understand good and coming to the relations between trigonometric ratios what are the relations between trigonometric ratios yes sin theta is the reciprocal of cosecant theta how can i write that that is first one sin theta is the reciprocal of cosecant theta means sin theta is equal to reciprocal means what 1 divided by cosecant theta sin theta is equal to 1 divided by cosecant theta can we write if sin theta equal to 1 by cosecant theta then cosecant theta is equal to 1 divided by sin theta right so by cross multiplication you can say that sin theta 
into cosecant theta which is equal to 1 right since sin theta is equal to 1 by cosecant theta and cosecant theta is equal to 1 by sin theta you can say that sin theta into cosecant theta is equal to 1 and see here one thing is very clear 1 divided by x is defined only when x is not equal to 0 1 by x is defined only when x is not equal to 0 that is the common property for any fraction so that I am not just telling here sin theta equal to 1 by cosecant theta and cosecant theta equal to 1 by sin theta provided cosecant theta and sin theta should not be 0 of course that is by default ok need not to mention particularly if I am not wrong. So, that is why I am just telling you 1 by x is a real number or 1 by x is a definite number only when x cannot be 0 otherwise it is undefined obviously right. So, that is the first relation between sin theta and cosecant theta coming to the second relation that second relation is going to be what is that second relation that is cos theta is equal to 1 divided by secant theta as well as secant theta is equal to 1 divided by cos theta. So, from these two we can say one thing by cross multiplication cos theta multiplied by secant theta is going to be 1 right and third one what is the third one. So, third one is going to be what is the third one third one is tan theta is equal to 1 divided by cot theta as well as cot theta is equal to 1 divided by tan theta. So, tan theta equal to 1 by cot theta and cot theta equal to 1 by tan theta from these two we can say that tan theta into cot theta is going to be 1. So, these are relations between trigonometric ratios. And if you once observe this is tan theta and this is cot theta and cot theta is equal to 1 by tan theta and tan theta is equal to 1 by cot theta also. But is it possible to express tan theta and cot theta in terms of sin theta as well as cos theta or not? Let us once try to understand by the definitions of sin theta and cos theta right as well as tan theta and cot theta of course. For example, we know that sin theta is equal to side opposite to theta divided by hypotenuse that is y divided by r as well as cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta divided by hypotenuse. So, by these two I can understand one thing that tan theta was defined as side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta these are the definitions. But if we once observe I am writing this y divided by x as y divided by r divided by x divided by r because r and r gets cancelled. But y divided by r is nothing but sin theta as well as x divided by r is nothing but cos theta. So, what did you understand now? Yes, we can express tan theta as sin theta divided by cos theta. Therefore, tan theta is equal to sin theta divided by cos theta and as we already aware that what is cot theta in terms of tan theta? Cot theta is equal to 1 by tan theta but tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta. So, that 1 divided by sin theta by cos theta is going to be cos theta divided by sin theta. So, therefore, we can write tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta as well as cot theta is equal to cos theta by sin theta right. So, these are relations between trigonometric ratios and now let us try to understand how are these trigonometric ratios useful in our daily life ok. Because if there is a physical significance is there then only we strongly believe in that mathematics is useful somewhere. Otherwise, why, why to uh, learn all these things? What is the use of this trigonometry? What is the use of algebra, calculus, something like that? Suppose, if there is a use, what is the physical significance of our mathematics, physical significance of our trigonometry? So, for example, I have a question that question is like 
there is a telephone tower the telephone tower is for example telephone tower is for example some 15 meters height the height of the telephone tower is 15 meters of course the telephone tower will be on the ground and telephone tower is always vertical that's why the angle between telephone tower to the horizontal is always equal to 90 degrees suppose there is a person standing at some distance standing at some distance and he is observing the top of the telephone tower observing the top of the telephone tower at an angle of 45 degrees he is observing the top of the telephone tower at an angle of 45 degrees now i just want to know what is the horizontal distance of the person from the tower means i just want to find out this horizontal distance did you understand what is the question here there is a telephone tower whose height is equal to 15 meters and there is a person standing at some distance and he is observing the top of the telephone tower at an angle of 45 degrees then what is the horizontal distance between the person to the telephone tower then this is what we want see in general with the help of geometrical concepts it is not useful to find out the horizontal distance but if you just think about this question with the perception of trigonometric knowledge then easily you can figure it out you know how it is this is the angle 45 degrees is absolutely an acute angle and it is a right angle triangle according to this acute angle what do you call this side yes that side is said to be the side opposite to that angle and what do you want here you want this is the side what do you call this side this is side adjacent to that angle now just before we discussed about the relations or ratios between trigonometric ratios or what are trigonometric ratios can you exactly tell me which trigonometric ratio gives the relationship between side opposite to angle and side adjacent to angle yes tan theta or cot theta gives the relationship between side opposite to that angle and side adjacent to that angle so that is tan theta is equal to side opposite to theta side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta right here theta is equal to 45 degrees so tan 45 degrees because theta equal to 45 which is equal to side opposite to theta that is 15 meters we don't know what is side adjacent to theta that is x but we should know here what is the value of tan 45 of course exactly after this uh, class definitely we will uh, we'll discuss about what is tan 45 degrees but beforehand i am telling you the value of tan 45 which is equal to 1 so 1 is equal to 15 divided by x then by cross multiplication x into 1 equal to x 15 into 1 is equal to 15 so what does this mean x is equal to 15 means he is at 15 meters distance from the foot of the telephone tower so this is one of the use of trigonometric ratios of course like that lot more uses of trigonometric ratios so everything we'll discuss one by one understand now coming to the point here there are some questions given so you are going to answer these questions first of all if sin theta is equal to if sin theta is equal to 3 divided by 5 in the adjacent figure if sin theta is equal to 3 by 5 in the adjacent figure then find cos theta tan theta and secant theta then you will have to find cos theta tan theta and secant theta how is this possible yes figure should be given right so this is a triangle given and more over this is right angle and theta is given over here sin theta is given as sin theta is equal to 3 divided by 5 in the adjacent figure so that i can say that this is 3 and this is 5 then you will have to find what are cos theta tan theta as well as secant theta 
in order to find sin secant theta tan theta cosecant theta cot theta whatever other five trigonometric ratios i should know what is side opposite to theta and what is side adjacent to theta and what is hypotenuse out of these three unknowns two are already given so i need to find the third unknown otherwise i cannot find out the other trigon trigonometric ratios which are connected with the adjacent side to theta did you get my point so first of all my triangle should be a completed triangle completed triangle means i should know all the three sides of the triangle since it is being a right angled triangle if i do not know any one of the sides i can easily figure out that side by using a well known famous theorem on right angled triangle what is that yes that is pythagoras theorem so let us say this side is equal to x now according to pythagoras theorem hypotenuse square equal to side square plus side square hypotenuse is 5 here so hypotenuse square is 5 square is equal to side square plus side square that is 3 square plus x square 5 square is going to be 25 which is equal to 3 square is equal to 9 plus x square is x square 9 plus how much is equal to 25 yes 9 plus 16 is equal to 25 so that x square is going to be 16 if x square is equal to 16 x is equal to how much yes plus or minus 4 but x is being a length of the side cannot be negative that's why the value of x is equal to 4 means the other side is going to be 4 see now the triangle is complete so that i can apply any trigonometric ratio first first thing i just want to know what is cos theta so what is the definition of cos theta here cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta so side adjacent to theta divided by hypotenuse okay side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse is theta adjacent to theta is 4 so 4 divided by what is hypotenuse here yes hypotenuse is equal to 5 similarly after cos theta you want tan theta so tan theta is equal to what is the definition of tan theta side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta so side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta which is equal to what is side opposite to theta here theta opposite to theta is 3 so 3 divided by adjacent to theta is equal to of course that is 4 just now we got it and then we are going to find secant theta so secant theta is equal to hypotenuse divided by side adjacent to theta so hypotenuse by side adjacent to theta which is equal to what is hypotenuse here hypotenuse is of course 5 divided by side adjacent to theta is equal to 4 see how easily we calculated we found all the other trigonometric ratios when you are given one particular trigonometric ratio hope you understand right let's go with one more example okay and before i explain you one example i just want to give you a hint or a shortcut to remember all these six trigonometric ratios these six trigonometric ratios are sin theta cos theta tan theta cosecant theta secant theta if you remember first three trigonometric ratios you can easily remember the remaining three trigonometric ratios as they are the reciprocals of first three trigonometric ratios right what exactly is the definition of sin theta sin theta is equal to side opposite to theta divided by hypotenuse and cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta divided by hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta correct see sin theta sin theta is side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta opposite by hypotenuse opposite by hypotenuse sin is opposite side by hypotenuse 
and what about cos cos is side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse adjacent to theta by hypotenuse and coming to tan tan theta is side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta what is this s o h so ka toa so so ka toa if you remember these three so ka toa then you don't have to remember all these things what is this so s o h s yes stands for sin o stands for opposite side h stands for hypotenuse and ka c stands for cos a stands for adjacent side h stands for hypotenuse and t o a toa t stands for tan o stands for opposite side and a stands for adjacent side so if you remember so ka toa you can remember those three trigonometric ratios if you can remember those three trigonometric ratios you can remember other trigonometric three ratios as they are the reciprocals of first to three ratios hope it is interesting yes so this is about trigonometric ratios and coming to the second example that second example on these ratios is for example the question given here if 5 tan theta is equal to 7 if 5 tan theta is equal to 7 then find sin square theta plus secant square theta right this is the given question if the value of 5 tan theta is equal to 7 then you will have to find out the value of sin square theta plus secant square theta first of all let us try to understand what is the information given in the problem so what is the information given in the problem that is 5 tan theta is equal to 7 If it is five tan theta is equal to seven, five is nothing but five is a multiple of tan theta. So you can transpose that five towards right hand side. Then it is going to be tan theta is equal to seven divided by five. Tan theta is equal to seven divided by five. And since tan theta is being a ratio, now you can equate this seven divided by five with the definition of tan theta. So what is the definition of tan theta? Which is equal to side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta. So side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta is equal to tan theta, right? So that is why we can equate seven divided by five with side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta. Now let us frame a triangle. Okay? So let the triangle be right. So this is a triangle. in this triangle for example this is triangle a b c uh, for example this is acute angle theta because theta must be an acute angle since it is acute angle theta side opposite to theta is equal to side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta is equal to 7 by 5 now my question is can we directly write side opposite to theta is equal to 7 and side adjacent to theta equal to 5 I'll ask clearly. For example, x divided by y is equal to seven divided by five. If x divided by y is equal to seven divided by five, can we directly write x is equal to seven and y is equal to five? That's what my question is. Yes, absolutely, we cannot write because seven divided by five is a ratio. Is every single ratio has infinitely many number of equivalent ratios. What is meant by equivalent ratios? For example, if you multiply both seven and five with one non-zero number, for example by two, then you will get seven into two is equal to fourteen, and five into two is equal to ten. So fourteen by ten is equivalent ratio to seven divided by five. Suppose if you say that x divided by y is equal to seven divided by five, then x is equal to seven and y is equal to five. Then can we equate these two? Can we say that seven is equal to fourteen and five is equal to ten? Absolutely not. So that is why when two ratios are equal, then you cannot say that antecedent and antecedent are equal and consequent and consequent are equal. So then there must be one non-zero number is being added or being multiplied. 
is being multiplied or being divided. So, that is why you can say that when x by y is equal to 7 divided by 5, then x is equal to 7 into 1 constant and y is equal to 5 into the same constant. Hope you understand. So, when you equate the ratios, two ratios, you cannot exactly say that numerator is equal to numerator as well as denominator is equal to denominator. So, that is why in this particular ratio 7 divided by 5 is equal to side opposite to theta by side is into theta. You cannot exactly say that side opposite to theta is 7 and side adjacent to theta is equal to 5. So, that side opposite to theta can be considered as 7k and side adjacent to theta can be considered as 5k, correct? k being a fixed number. Now, in that particular right angled triangle, right angle at B, you know two sides of the triangle, but you do not know what is the third side. So, how to obtain the third side? Yes, by using Pythagoras theorem. So, by using Pythagoras theorem, you can easily obtain what is the third side AC, right? So, in the triangle ABC by Pythagoras theorem, AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square, correct? So, here AB is equal to 7K. So, 7K whole square plus BC square. BC is equal to 5K. So, 5K whole square. 7K whole square is nothing but 7 square into K square. So, 7 square is 49K square plus 5K whole square is 5 square is equal to 25 k whole square is equal to k square. So, here 49 k square plus 25 k square. Of course, you can add both of them. What is the value of 49 plus 25 which is equal to 74 k square that is a c square. When a c square is equal to 74 k square, then what is the value of a c? Yes, a c is going to be root over 74 k square, you can write it as root over 74 into k square, root k square is equal to k. So, that is the value of AC. I will write the value of AC here, root over 74 k, right? Now, you know all the three sides of the triangle and you can easily figure out what is sin square theta plus secant square theta. So, therefore, sin square theta plus secant square theta. So, here one more confusion. What is the sin square theta mean? Is the sin square theta which is equal to sin theta square or sin theta whole square? Okay. Sin theta square or sin square theta or sin theta whole square. See here, as we discussed earlier, there is no meaning of sin as there is no meaning of theta individually. If it is sin theta, then, then only there is a meaning. Therefore, sin square theta means that is the square of the entire trigonometric ratio sin theta. If this is sin theta square, that square belong to the angle that does not belong to the entire trigonometric ratio. But sin theta whole square is that square belong to the entire trigonometric ratio. So, Ensure that sin square theta is equal to sin theta whole square, but it is not equal to sin theta square. That is not the square of angle. That is the square of the entire trigonometric ratio. Clear? Right. So, now you want see sin square theta plus secant square theta. Let us try to identify what is sin theta and what is secant theta from the triangle. Anyway, you are aware of what is the definition of sin theta and what is the definition of secant theta. What is the definition of sin theta here? According to this angle theta, sin theta is equal to side opposite to theta by hypotenuse. Side opposite to theta is going to be 7k and hypotenuse is going to be root 74k. I will write for sin square theta and beforehand I will write sin square theta as sin theta whole square plus secant square theta can be written as secant theta whole square. Okay? Now, sin theta is equal to, what is sin theta? 7k divided by root over 
सेवेंटी फोर के होल स्क्वेर प्लस सी कैंड दीटा वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सी कैंड दीटा हाईपोटेनियस बाई साइड एडजेंट टू दीटा सो हाईपोटेनियस इज इक्वल टू रूट ओवर सेवेंटी फोर के डिवाइडेड बाई साइड एडजेंट टू दीटा इज इक्वल टू फाइव के सो फाइव के होल स्क्वेर सी इन साइड सेवन के डिवाइडेड बाई रूट ओवर सेवेंटी फोर के k k gets cancel here also k and k gets cancel since it is square you can write it as 7 whole square is equal to 49 divided by root 74 whole square is equal to 74 plus root 74 whole square is equal to 74 divided by 5 square is equal to 25 right so to simplify this you need to cross multiply and then divided by 74 into 25 then you get the value of sin square theta plus secant square theta so this way you can easily figure out whatever the ratio that you want when you are given one particular ratio right so let's move on to one more example so that is if a and b are acute angles if a and b are acute angles such that cos a is equal to cos b then show that angle a is equal to angle b this is one of the examples see here a and b are acute angles of a triangle such that cos a is equal to cos b cos a is equal to cos b cos and sin when a is acute angle b is acute angle definitely they are defined in a right angle triangle okay let me draw one right angle triangle such that this is angle a and this is angle b okay both are two angles and of course they are acute angles if a and b are acute angles in a right angle triangle then obviously one of the angles is right angle let it be angle c okay and now according to this what is the information given cos a is equal to cos b if cos a is equal to cos b you know what is the definition of cos a as well as definition of cos b from the adjacent right angle triangle i will write the definition of cos a and cos b as cos a is equal to cos b given okay cos a is equal to cos b given what is the definition of cos a definition of cos a is according to this angle a side adjacent to angle a by hypotenuse what is the side adjacent to angle a here that is ac only no because side opposite to angle a is bc therefore side adjacent to angle a is ac therefore cos a is equal to ac divided by hypotenuse is equal to ab which is equal to now cos b what is the definition of cos b now you will have to see according to angle b according to angle b what is the side adjacent to angle b obviously that is bc so bc divided by what is hypotenuse obviously hypotenuse remains unchanged that is ab right in these two ratios you have a single denominator that to same denominator can we cancel both the denominators yes then we left with ac is equal to bc what do you mean by this ac is equal to bc means two sides of a triangle are equal if two sides of a triangle are equal then what do you call the triangle those triangles are said to be isosceles triangles right so ac is equal to bc this side ac is same as this side bc so that if two sides of an isosceles triangle are equal then the angles opposite to equal sides also equal right what is the angle opposite to bc that is angle a and what is the angle opposite to ac that is angle b therefore you can say that angle a is equal to angle b hence proved right see here a and b are acute angles of a triangle such that cos a is equal to cos b then you will have to show that angle a is equal to angle b but you need to understand a lot with the help of this problem this is not just a problem to solve 
not just a problem to show when cos A is equal to cos B then angle A equal to angle B. Once I will write this here when cos A is equal to cos B then we can say that A is equal to B correct. Once observe clearly before this class I think we discussed about we cannot see cos and A separately. If it is cos A then only there is a meaning. But if we once observe this cos A is equal to cos B then A is equal to B. It looks like cos A is equal to cos B. We got A is equal to B. Means he is happily we can cancel cos and cos right then we left with A and B which are A is equal to B. So, this is not a correct perception. This is absolutely a wrong perception. Here you need to understand one thing that cos A is equal to cos B where A and B are two different angles. If any trigonometric ratio which is equal at two different angles it means that those two angles also equal. So, cos A is equal to cos B then A is equal to B. This is not only true for cos it is true it is true applicable for any other trigonometric ratio. For example, if I would say tan A is equal to tan B tan A is equal to tan B then I can say that A is equal to B means if two trigonometric ratios are equal at two different angles then it means that they are not different angles they are same angles right. So, if tan A is equal to tan B we can say that A is equal to B. If sin A is equal to sin B we can say that A is equal to B or cos A is equal to cos B we can say that A is equal to B. Of course, they may be different angles, but as per our 10th class knowledge, those two angles must be same. And for example, there is a problem given like this, um, like hope you understand this, okay, right. So, coming to the next problem, okay, next example, that next example is, I am going to ask you one question that sin theta is equal to 1.5 sin theta is equal to 1.5 is this a correct statement or wrong statement or else you can say that sin theta is equal to 1.5 for one angle theta is that possible now you will have to think sin theta is equal to 1.5 we do not know anything about theta and there is no triangle there is nothing given you are given only sin theta is equal to 1.5. Is this possible or not? Absolutely, we can check this sin theta equal to 1.5 is right or wrong easily by the definition of sin theta. So, what is the definition of sin theta? In a right angle triangle, if theta is an acute angle, then this is side opposite to theta and this is hypotenuse, right? According to the definition of sin theta, sin theta is equal to side opposite to theta divided by hypotenuse and which is equal to 1.5 that was given. Now, you will have to check whether it is possible or not. See side opposite to theta divided by hypotenuse. In any right angle triangle, hypotenuse is only the greatest side. Then side opposite to theta or side adjacent to theta. So, that hypotenuse is only greatest or greater than opposite side to theta and side adjacent to theta. Now, you see here if hypotenuse is more than the numerator means the denominator is new more than the numerator. If you identify sin theta which is equal to 1.5 and we are equating the sin theta with the definition that is side opposite to theta by hypotenuse side opposite to theta is always smaller than hypotenuse. Always smaller than hypotenuse means numerator should be less than the denominator. So, numerator should be less than the denominator means take anything which is less than divided by the greater number. So, this value is always smaller than 1 and always more than 0. So, that it cannot be more than 1. So, that is why sin theta equal to 1.5 is not correct statement. Hope you understand, right? We will discuss in the next class. Thank you.